Hello, everybody, and welcome to Virtual Trek Con. This is the Star Trek Movie Universe panel. Joining us are Darnell Davis, Tracy Coco, Rico E. Anderson, and Darth Shuey, all of whom are presumably lifelong Star Trek fans. They got, to, they got to set foot on the set of the Star Trek movies, which is pretty awesome. How are you guys doing? Good. Right. Awesome. Thank you for having us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first, I'm just going to go around the room and uh, say what, which movies you're in. Darnell Davis, you were in uh, Star Trek VI, right? Yes. You were a Klingon. Uh, Rico E. Anderson, you were in the Star Trek 2009 movie, as was Darth Shuey. Uh, I was also <laughs> in the 2009 movie and uh, Star Trek Into Darkness 2013. And Darth, go ahead and put your phone on silent. <laughs> and Tracy Coco was in the first three Next Generation movies uh, as Lieutenant J, right? Yes, and the Borg Queen stunt double. Nice. Oh. In uh, First Contact. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll start with you, Darnell. How long have you been a Star Trek fan? I don't remember any time not watching Star Trek. Star Trek has been there. <laughs> my entire life um literally i watched it from the beginning and uh, i've been uh as long as i can remember on sundays when they started doing it just once a week and then when they played it every night uh the reruns you know so i've always been there love it and uh tracy were you a star trek fan before you started working on the show not that big of one, no. I did watch the, you know, one with uh, uh, William Shatner, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't get into it until, I, you know, when I got on, I, I had no idea what I was, you know, getting into. And then, wow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, craziness. So, um, yeah, I basically really started watching it when, yeah, I was on. It sounds kind of stupid, but that's how oh, it well. happened. <laughs> right, I uh, a lot of people. Uh, yeah. What about you, Darth? Uh, geez, when did they start the, the, the reruns? Like early seventies? I started watching it right, right around the early seventies. No, I, yeah, it's been my my whole you life. Born yet? Much. <laughs> yeah, well, that's you know, <laughs> close enough. No, I, I remember as a kid. You know, when you spin around as a kid and then you're like all dizzy. And uh, whenever I do that, when I was a kid, I would uh, think of uh, I was imagining I'm on the bridge when they when they would get attacked, and you know they're doing their little fake. Uh, so even my whole entire life, I just it's like a part of you know, like, I don't know, breastfeeding or something, you know, it's like just something that's always been in your life, you know. <laughs> breastfeeding is always in my, has always been in my life, by the way, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> just to clarify. Anyway, so you have children, I guess. Um, <laughs> I, I, Rico, and uh, Rico, you became a Star Trek fan uh, with Discovery, right? Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't follow up Darth here. I mean, I, I gotta go. <laughs> Um, no, I, I became <laughs> Discovery. No, no, I became a Star <laughs> Trek fan uh, during uh, reruns of the original series. Um, I remember coming home from school and, you know, how they would have like those cartoon lineups. And um, they, you know, they, they would also have like old school like TV series lineups and start. I remember the original series was, was one of them. And so watching those and of course getting, you know, when Next Gen kicked in and the movies. And so. I became a Star Trek fan at an early age as a little boy. Yeah. <laughs> so fast forward a bit to when you found out that you were in fact going to set foot on a Star Trek set. Uh, we'll start with Darnell since chronologically speaking, he was the first of us to set foot on a Star Trek set. So before you were ever even there, did it hit you? Were you like, oh, my God, it's actually, I'm actually going to be on a Star Trek set? You know what? Um, one of the guys told me, dude, they're looking for tall people, you know, people that fit your size. And I was like, you know, OK, I'll go down there and, you know, give it a shot. And, you know, they needed Klingons. And so because the movie is full of Klingons and um, went down there. And, uh, you know, in the audition process, just, oh, okay, you look like it. Okay, you can do it. And I was like, wow, that was pretty easy. And, went down there and <laughs> turned out to be one of the best experiences of my life. It, it 
really, um, you know, I was early here in Hollywood. So, you know, I hadn't uh, been here very long. And uh, to go down there and to be a lifelong Star Trek fan and to get to go there and play every day, put on that makeup every day, to meet all these people that I have been loved my entire life every single day. It was, it was great, you know, so I had a great time. It was, it was one of my best experiences as an actor in Hollywood and I was barely acting. I did, I did, you know, a little stunt thing when they were um, had me floating around the ship, but um, it was more fun for me than anything else. And just being there uh, for you know, a month and a half or two months or whatever it was. was wow, that long. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it was a movie. So, and then, like I said, they had needed plenty of uh, plenty of Klingons. So if you watch the movie, you'll see um, there's Klingons with makeup. And then in the back, there's people that just had on masks. I was lucky I got to have makeup on every day. Uh, and so, you know, you start early, 2, 3 in the morning. You go down to Paramount. I live close to Paramount. So, I, you know, I just walk to Paramount every day. And um, then started and you were on the same sets as uh, Next Generation. So one of the coolest things, I would go around and I would um, read those little signs that everyone talks about that had a little jokes on there that you didn't know what it says. It, it, <laughs> when it's far away, you just think it's something technical. And, and But when you're close up, it's a little joke. And, and that was pretty cool. So yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Uh, I, I met so many people. Um, and uh, uh, one of my favorite, of course, was uh, Brock Peters was in that movie. And, uh, wow, yeah. And he took to me because one week we were up in Simi Valley and um, we were shooting uh, the Kittermer Accords. And uh, he took to me and he, he just started talking to me. And, you know, he was telling me all these stories. And he's such a nice guy. It was just, I, I, you know, I can I have all I have all those kind of experience with all of these different people that were in the show. So I. Um, it was really, really great. And I, I really enjoyed um, that experience with uh, uh, with the people. I got to meet Mark Leonard and uh, Kim Cattrall was in that movie. And, um, wow. and so all cool. these different people. <clears throat> we Darnell, had, did Michael do your makeup? Did Michael do um, your makeup? I think his name was, the person that did my makeup was Gil. And oh, okay. His last name started with a G. It was two G's. I think his first name was Gil. And I do, I remember him passing away. Um, uh, I remember seeing his name that he had passed away um, oh. time ago, maybe a couple of years ago. But um, they had a huge makeup staff, they, you know, because there were, if, if, for those of you who've seen the movie, you know that there are aliens, not just Klingons, just uh, because it's a kid so they have Romulus, they have Balkans, they have... Um, uh, aliens that you've never seen before. Uh, so um, they, it was it was a ton of ton of aliens there. Um, so the makeup staff was amazing. Um, the last night we had such we were having such long days. We were staying up in a hotel in Simi Valley. We went to um, all the Klingons got together. We went to uh, the club and the hotel that night. Uh, and then it was like, okay, time to go to work. It's one o'clock. So <laughs> we were up the entire oh, night. Man. Oh my God. We got, we got our makeup on. We worked that last day 22 hours. So wow. we were up all that time. Holy cow. Uh, but it was fun. It was the time of your life. It was the time of your life. Right hey guys, uh, real quick, uh, we want to welcome Mr. Jason Matthew Smith. How are you, Jason? Hey, Sideways. Uh, I, I'm Jason. trying to figure out how to change my background. How do you do that? Well, first, can you, you turn your sideways. camera horizontally? Uh, oh, geez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. Techn technologically challenged here. That's okay. That's better. <laughs> Great. Thanks. What's up, buddy? Um, so, so for everybody out there, Jason Matthew Smith was in uh, all three of the uh, 2009, 2013, 2015 movies, correct? The JJ movies? Yes. Correct. Well, yes, sort of, because uh, <laughs> on the third one, they cut my scenes out entirely. But, um, it kind of, it, it's weird. It was like a progression in the first movie. I had more stuff. And then the second one, I had more scenes, but they ended up showing less. And then the third, I had giant scenes and they ended up showing nothing. So <laughs> it's kind of 
Right, but there's kind of a silver lining to all that, right? Um, it's kind of a, in a way, uh, it's a good thing that some of the scenes were, uh, were cut out, right, or no? Yes, because uh, I am the, I, I believe I hold the record of the longest living um, red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ice, ice, ice. Ever. Well, at least in the in those <laughs> movies. I didn't even see you there, man. Oh, no. it, you look good, bro. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, <laughs> you too. It's great to see you, man. So, Jason, let me ask you this. Um, everybody at home knows you as Cupcake, the character Cupcake uh, in the movies. But did you have uh, an actual like uh, name on the script that was that was different? Like, what did what did they call you? What was yeah. your name? Character's name is actually Lieutenant Hendorf. Um, I don't know where. Well, in the first movie, the uh, the role was actually listed as Burly Cadet. Right. <laughs> um, you know, weird. When when I actually auditioned for this thing, I didn't even know. I I knew it was Star Trek, but nobody really said it was Star Trek. And you know, there were, the script that they handed me. I don't I don't even think it had it had like farm boy one farm girl two you know it had, <laughs> um, star trek in it and i just read it on camera uh somewhere in burbank and then uh next thing at a casting director's office and then uh you know they called me up and said yeah you got the job i was like what and you know that was cool and then even showing up on set for that first movie, the uh, the character name was still Burley Cadet, and I was like <laughs> on a mission to talk to. Uh, when I first met JJ, I was like, "Hey, what's up, JJ?" I was like, "You yeah, have something about this name, man. It's you know Burley Cadet. It's you know." He's like, "Yeah, but you're Burley Cadet number one." I was like. Yeah. <laughs> No, that ain't gonna work, man. I was like, what about something cool like Apollo or, you know, Starbucks? Like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then, uh, you know, I start every day. It became a running joke during that first uh, first week or so on uh, Star Trek, the first one. I would just pepper him with names all day long. <laughs> what about this one? What about this one? And I think finally, you know, during the second and third movie, he didn't want me to pepper him anymore, so he actually gave the character a name <laughs> of Lieutenant Endor. Right. Well, I guess it should be in the the uh, original series canon, um, at least in the Wikipedia when I looked it up. Really? There uh, exists. Rico and Darnell had good original series knowledge. Do you guys remember that? And what, what was the name? Lieutenant Endor. <clears throat> Mm, you gotta look at Wikipedia. Got it. Uh, Memory Alpha would That's have cool. it. Uh, yeah. It actually does that stuff, but they said it was, you know, actually a character from the original series. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That appeared maybe once for five seconds. That's enough it's for us nerds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, 2009 is my favorite Star Trek movie. It really is. It makes me cry within. The next, I know people are in shock when they hear this. It <laughs> fly within five minutes. If any movie can right. make me do that, it, it it has me hooked. There are only and, two movies that have done that, right? There was the 2009 movie with the with the the, the whole Kelvin scene, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, the other one is Up. Uh, oh yeah, up. exactly. Oh, up, man. Exactly. That, that, I couldn't even get through that. I was just uh, I was painful. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to ask you in the second movie. You guys go down to the Klingon planet, and then there's a shootout, and you disappear. And I was like, "What happened?" So, what happened to you? What was what was the situation? man? That that was a crazy, crazy week. There, we we were shooting. I think it was a couple of weeks. We were shooting down at uh, in Sony in Culver City, and we walk into the sound stage. It was freaking unbelievable. Like the the sets and the set pieces and how everything looked and smelled and felt. They had to put uh, kitty litter all over the floor, which uh, wasn't very uh, pleasant to run in 
because I don't know if you've ever tried to run and oh, yeah. that are on, oh, all the time. On a yeah. concrete. <laughs> <laughs> I kept wiping out left and right. You know, if you got like designer boots on that aren't like really fully gripped. And uh, but anyways, that yeah, scene that we shot was very uh, the, the whole progression was very, very different than what you saw on on screen. Uh, JJ is notorious for shooting um, alternate versions of the same scene so that not even the actors really know what is going to, I don't even think JJ really knows what the <laughs> final product is going to be. He just kind of gets in there in the editing room and kind of sees mm. which version of it works the best. <laughs> and, um, and if somebody at the studio, or whatever, gives him a note, says, you know, this isn't really, this storyline isn't really going well. Can we change it? He's like, yeah, which version do you want? A, B, or C? Here they are. So the way that we shot that and the way that it actually turned out was very, very different. And I actually shot a death scene in that um, uh, particular scene uh, where a Klingon chopped my head off wow. with a uh, one of those <laughs> blades, those really wicked looking blades. Black whip. Matleth. Oh, yeah. I, what are they called? <clears throat> Matleth. Or it might have been a Metcleth if it was just a short it, one. It was uh, the big like, one? I think it was like curved on both ends or so. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it was it's got to be a Matleth. It was big. It was a bat. Yeah, it was very big, very scary. And they had two different versions of it. One was like dulled and the other was sharp, as With sharp as a freaking razor blade. Oh, lovely. So that, you know, when they show it close up or whatever, it looks nasty. And I, I talked to my, my stunt guy he comes up to me, he's in full Klingon, you know, makeup. And he's like, hey, man, don't worry, I'm a professional, I've been doing this for years. And I said, well, I trust you, but if you kill me, my wife is going to come find you. <laughs> <laughs> so he, uh, we shot that many, many different times where they, they would put the real blade right to my neck and then reverse out of it so that you could, mm -hmm. when you sped back into it, it would you know, look like they're cutting my head off. But I guess the cutting of the head off probably didn't play very well in test audiences. So they eliminated that, which allowed me to come back for, what was that? That was two, right? Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, allowed us to come back. In the darkness. Another one. So Hendorf lives. Woo! He does. He still lives. And you know, after the, uh, the third movie, um, I went to the premiere. I didn't know that my, I wasn't even in it, you know? So I've been doing all this promotion and stuff uh, for the movie. And then I, you know, I'm on the red carpet saying hi to everybody. And then I'm in the theater there. It was beautiful outdoor theater. And then I find out that my character is, you know, I'm like, Hey hun, here's, here comes, I was with my wife. I'm like, here comes my team. <laughs> oh my. Like, oh, my Where was it? I was like, uh, I think they, they cut it, I think. <laughs> and then, you know, I was like, but it, there's another big one coming up here soon. So that next one comes up and it was totally different. I was like, oh, damn, I'm cut. I'm totally cut out of the movie. So afterwards, I had to go to a party to meet with uh, the director and with JJ and all the cast and everything. I was like, oh, it, was, it was so embarrassed. I was like, no, nah, I can't go. I'm not in it, you know. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to go because I want to know why they cut me out. <laughs> and you know yeah, what actor does that by the way like, I want to <laughs> but i was i was just so infuriated i was like why did they cut me so i went in there and i pin i as diplomatically as i could i pinned down both jj and the director and i said what what happened in the process and they said well during the course of filming, we changed storylines and your storyline didn't make it. And we tried all the way up until the final week of editing to keep you in the movie. But uh, ultimately for running time, because these things are very calculated, um, have to be, you know, down to the very second. Every freaking second on those uh, on these types of movies is is calculated to have the you know the best effect the best running time all that stuff and i guess my my character story arc didn't uh, didn't play into it 
Right. You know, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, because I've, I've produced a lot of movies in, and a lot of sci-fi, and, and with everything, you're rewriting the movie on, on the editing table, basically, you know? Uh, yeah. you, first you write on the script, then the director's writing it when they shoot it, and then they rewrite it in the editing. And sometimes they just want to go in a different angle. You know, they realize, you know, it's better to go into this storyline. Sometimes they just, they're not happy with the shot they, they did. It has nothing to do with the story at all, you know? Um, so who knows? But I got JJ's assurance that um, out of that particular meeting, he's like, look, man, if we're doing another one, you're coming with us forever. You're and Dorf lives the, again. <laughs> you're the glitch in the matrix. All right. Know? That's really cool. Yeah. So, uh, Darth. Never so speaking of which, Darth, um, when you found out you were cast as farm boy number two, uh, whoa. <laughs> Darth here was, has been a lifelong Star Trek fan, and he found out he was cast in the 2009 movie. Uh, what kind of went through your head when you found that out, Darth? Yeah, I, well, I was cast as a farm boy of uh, 47. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, it, it was, not, it was that's, that's a good number. That's the Star Trek number, 47, for you right. nerds out there. Oh, whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I didn't know. I had no idea it was Star Trek. So uh, it wasn't, I think, until I saw the uniform where it was like, you know, there's no two ways about it. Like, all right, this, this is Star Trek. So I don't know, pretty, pretty damn exciting. Like, yeah, kind of tough to, right? All, all you guys would say the same thing. Like, it's kind of tough to keep your, keep your cool. Yeah, exactly. Especially when you're a fan. So, you know, it's, it, you, you just got to go, okay, I'm a professional. I can do this. So, you know. Mm -hmm. and they called it something different too. It was yeah. like Washington or something yeah. like that. I don't know. There, like uh, title or something. See, yeah, there was something. I mean, they have to have a different one every time because then people catch on and sometimes they use two working titles. I, uh, I just remember one of the things was we, I don't know if you had this too, Darth, but uh, writing into the sets in uh, golf carts oh, that yeah. were covered in curtains. Yep. yep. And yeah. you're covered in a curtain too. You have like a yeah. big, right? Uh, they put you in like a raincoat on and they, you're in. <laughs> yeah, the black. I want people to see you as you're walking to the to the trailer. Well, because you know why? Because um, like where we shot um, in the blimp hangar, uh, where they had the shuttle crafts, where everybody was being assigned to the ships and stuff. Um, there was apparently there were apparently like people like on the roofs of like across the freeway. This is what it was told with like <laughs> high roof cameras getting <laughs> yeah. to zoom in. Because that was like the first Star Trek in like I think nine ten years, so right. you know it was a it was a big deal, and everybody was looking for spoilers and stuff like that. And so that's why they actually had us walking from from you know one part of the set to the other, where you would think this, this is like in the middle of nowhere. There's no way, but they 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 had people who and and when you look later on, like a month later, you see they actually caught people in the black yeah. things, you know transporting <laughs> from here this part of the set to that part yeah. right right so they were telling us on the set on, on paramount they're like well you know helicopters and stuff you're like wouldn't you hear <laughs> are they are they up there uh what about now rico uh, you want to walk us through when you kind of found out what it was and that you were cast for it and how how much you got excited about that as a gigantic nerd that you are I'm a nerd. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> when when I got called in for the fitting, they didn't tell me what it was for or what the character was. But when I walked in there and they gave me the outfit, I thought I was playing a Romulan, but I thought I was playing like the original series type Romulan because the actual outfit had a Romulan, had like an original series Romulan um, look to it in terms of like like how the Romulans outfits were checkered and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying this on and I'm like, holy crap, I'm about to run. <laughs> and it turned out that I was a council member because, you know, they and this was like a new type of outfit, but it was it was a council member's outfit. So um that's where that's pretty much when I knew what I was what I was playing. It was it was really exciting though because it, it was it was pretty much <laughs> secretive all the way to the once we got on the set mm -hmm. and uh, that's when everything just pretty much really clicked together I mean I knew it was Star Trek but I didn't know what I was playing and, you know they were the security on the in that place was just insane you couldn't 
you couldn't go to the bathroom without letting somebody know without wearing things. You know, they made sure you didn't have your phone, you didn't have a camera and all this kind of stuff. Was, I let people know I'm going to the bathroom anyway. Uh, <laughs> but because? I I was the same way where like we I, we all kind of thought it was Star Trek. You know, I'm like, I'm pretty sure, you know, they're like futuristic military types or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever it was. And it had like a name that was kind of, and then, but then when, when I went into the fitting and I saw the Starfleet Delta yeah, say, as soon as you see on, that my, on my uniform that I'm putting on, <laughs> I'm like, okay, so the, the jig is up. Okay. We know it's, it's officially Star Trek now. And yeah. uh, Tracy, you kind of have a, a different story from the rest of us in that you worked throughout next generation for years. You worked throughout, a Voyager and Deep Space Nine for years. So you were completely used to this. Was there anything different jumping into the movies uh, as opposed to the, the regular series that you worked so many episodes on? Um, well, the movies, yeah, they're, they're very different. The filming and everything, um, the production. Well, you know, the next gen, when I first walked on the next gen, you know, stage, I was like, oh my God, this is like, <laughs> whoa. I thought I was really on a show. And then when I found out they put me in the, you know, when I went for the audition, they put me in the gold and black, come to find out that's the best color to be on the show because it runs two things on the ship. I didn't know that because I didn't even know what I was getting into when I got on the thing. Then, you know, um, met Michael Westmore. He gave me 15 different aliens to do on Deep Space Nine and Voyager. So there I was doing the, you know, the prosthetics and then working on the next gen and doing the prosthetics on the other shows. And then all of a sudden, Jonathan says, you know, come in, audition for the movie. And I, and I waited for, I remember that day I was here and I went and I was waiting and waiting for the call. And I finally got the call and oh my God, I started crying. Because I got on the movie, and then, you know, one thing led to me getting my stunt on the movie with the explosives, and um, and then, you know, they had me in all the colors. Um, I've worn every color, and I was wearing red, and I didn't die, but the movie production for the board queen, oh my god, that was insane, insane. I had to, literally, he had... They had me, because I was her stunt double, they had me hoisted up. You know when she comes down from the ceiling? Just the board her half queen, feet. right? The board queen. Yeah, her half, yeah. you know, and then it connects. Well, he had me up, Jonathan, in this contraption that was like a plank board. I was strapped on it, so then they would turn it, so I'd be facing, like, totally, like, down, like, looking at, oh, my God, all the people down there. And I'm afraid of heights, so... Um, <laughs> Then, you know, I had to, you know, obviously, have you done, Rico, have you done like, um, uh, you've done double work for people, right? So well, you not know, double like, work, but I've, I've done, I've, I've been on rigs and whatnot. Okay. Well, I had to like walk, you know, exactly how she walked and, you know, do, do, do. anyway, then I believe it was uh, almost when the movie was done or maybe in the middle before we got done, I got a call to come in to be her um, stunt double arms. <laughs> <laughs> those are my arms grabbing his leg it was grabbing like, data right when data yeah. gets pulled under the, the oh door. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so okay. i thought i recognized your hands when you were going like this <laughs> well well come <laughs> make a joke at that um the, the, the episode rascals where they turn into the little kids right. i was patrick stewart's hands um as a little boy when he was on the computer they called me back for that it's like weird shit that happens to me i swear to god <laughs> <laughs> i love it though the parts you play. Huh? <laughs> the parts you play. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was like, you know, the commercial Mikey. Let's get Mikey to do it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Same thing uh, me when um, uh, I did for Michael Dorn when uh, uh, there was some blood on the floor and they it was a big, huge deal. They, they, you had to, I had to wipe the blood off uh, of the ground using, you know, Michael Dorn, you know. And, and, and you don't think about those things watching a movie. But those things are little cutaways. Yeah, those cutaways are so important to the movie, and it was a big deal for them, you know. To me, yeah. Yeah, you know, I I just thought it was wow, you know. I never knew these things went on, but yeah. Wow. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, Jason. Uh, now that it's all over uh, until the next movie, is, is there a moment when you look back and you're like either surprised at how much you enjoyed it or just 
was better than everything else? Is there like a memory or a moment that just kind of really stands out to you? you know? Well, you know, a lot of that happened not on camera, you know, mm-hmm. obviously. Uh, the relationships that you make with people and, you know, that there's just an incredible amount of time movie making when you're on set with people. Um, you know, I've, I've got a lot of great memories from spending time with uh, Zoe and um, Chris and Simon and all those dudes. Um, I had, you know, I had worked with uh, John Cho before and uh, I had in, in the, well, not before the first Star Trek and when um, I, I did some sort of a, I think it was some sort of a sitcom that he was in after they did, he was, he was in the, the Harold and Kumar thing or, uh-huh. right. Um, but anyways, we had kind of a cold relationship. Like in the first, uh, Star Trek, he like totally ignored me, you know, pretty much the entire time on set and just wanted to talk Whoa. to everybody else. And I was like, okay, wow. I get it, man. I get it. You're a big deal. And then, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the second one, I didn't even see him. We weren't, like and I don't think we had any scenes together and then the third one I was with him like constantly and I you know we were just sitting around on set one day and you know he was talking to me he was like you know starting to open up a little bit and I was like man you changed a lot he's like what are you talking about it was like you were so cold to me back you know in the <laughs> old days man. and he's like no man that's not true I was just nervous as hell being around all those other people. So I didn't know how to behave. I, he's like, and look, I'm a total <laughs> idiot. So don't, don't worry about me. But he was so great. It was, you know, Zoe too. She's my girl. We, you know, had a lot of conversations about our kids and families. And, you know, they were very, they're really genuine, very warm people. Um, you know, all of them, Simon was, you know, great. Uh, very funny i think he played a big part of me being able to come back on the second one because he was writing it co-writing it you might have something to do with it and uh yeah it might have (laughs) i emailed him actually when i heard that they were doing a second one i was like so man am i gonna you know be in it he's like absolutely (laughs) we gotta we gotta keep the band together man i was like right you know i'm glad uh, I'm glad you mentioned Zoe, too. Uh, We've just got a few minutes left here, but uh, it seems as though your character and uh, Zoe Saldana's character, like that that might be the the person that you're closest with, at least your character is closest with, you know, and that's always like an interesting thing to see from episode to episode or movie to movie is how the friendships develop and how the relationships and all this. And I'm really hoping that there's like a fourth installment, you know, where there's just more of that. There's more of, of which people become like really good friends, you know, who's going to be the, the Kirk and Spock and who's going to be, you know, the, the best friends or the, the frenemies or whatever. Uh, do you have any ideas about that or any hopes? Man, I'm, I'm really hoping for a fourth uh, installment as well, just like everybody else. I hear rumblings, um, you know, directors being hired, deals being made, and then, you know, silence, everything goes dark and, um, you know, I, I know that there's a big desire there from the cast and from, I'm sure JJ would love to do another one as well. Um, I'm sure the studio would probably want to do another one, but it's just gotta, it's, it's, you know, the reality is it's all about money right. and they have to, you know, because there's kind of been a perception that. The first one made a lot. The second one made some, and the third one kind of broke even, which I don't, I don't believe. I think it actually made money, but there is an appetite. The world is changing. Um, You know, the appetite for what kind of movies is changing as well, and I think there's been a cry out from the Star Trek community that I have seen and witnessed um, for people wanting it to have. Uh, more themes from the original series, something right. that's more about, um, you know, personalized stories that, you know, are intricate and, and thought provoking and, you know, these types of, 
of uh, situations instead of just blowing up and, you know, explosions and lasers and all that kind of stuff. So I think if they can um, develop something that's a little lower budget and can, you know, use the story to drive right. the movie the way that the original series and, and to an extent, the the next generation and, you know, Deep Space Nine and stuff like that. I think it'd be really fun. Right. You know, the, more the, more story, less explosions. Yeah. That's yeah. Little... <laughs> and and some of the some of the movies were like that too. I mean, they were able to do, you know, really, really good stories in the in the movies as well. That's a good point. Um so with the, the last couple minutes left, uh, I do want to ask a couple more of you, uh like Rico, looking back, what was your your favorite memory or the biggest moment? Uh, just you know, was it the moment you realized it was Star Trek? Was it uh, the time Jonathan Cho was like, "Dude, I thought you were cold to me." No, you know, I would say the biggest, the definitely the best moment was the scene when we shot the scene at. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, at the end when Kirk <laughs> is basically um, exonerated and he's uh, given command of the Enterprise. Um, and right at the end, you know how the, um, the camera pans up and you see Spock. You see um, yeah. Prime Spock. And, um, you know, he says uh, his, his lines and things like that. So we were shooting that day and... Uh, JJ stopped and he was like, hey, everybody, can I have your attention, please? I want to, uh, we, we have a very, very honored guest today. And uh, if you all just look upward, uh, we have uh, Mr. Leonard Nimoy, who played Spock in the original series, all the movies, da, da, da. And dude, I, I swear to you, it was like, you know, that was the scene where everybody was in uh, the, in the, uh, in the, the big ceremony, the, the big hall, hall. And so everybody stood, you know, stood up, we clapped. It was just like a huge woo. You no, know, it's Leonard Nimoy, and he waved. He gave us the Vulcan salute, <laughs> and it was just a really, it was just a, it was just a wonderful uh, experience. Um, you know, being a part of that. Oh, wow, that's that, amazing! It's yeah, a great moment. It was beautiful. Uh, what about you, Darnell? Biggest moment was it when you were playing with uh, blood, or what? <laughs> 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 you cracked me up. I can't even think that. Um, <laughs> I, you know, um, probably my favorite. One. I, it's so many. It's just behind behind the scenes. Just seeing all these people from uh, you know that I grew up loving. Look, meeting them in real person that was that was really something for me. And uh, I had take. I was taking acting classes at the time. My acting teacher was um, uh, one of the directors for T.J. Hooker, so he said, "Oh, tell, tell William Shatner." Uh, I said, "Hi." So I went over and told <laughs> and I said, "Oh, cool." And then he said, "Take a picture with me." And you know, this was before cell phones. This is before anybody had a, a camera. So um, uh, he, he, him, and his, I think it was his grandkids were there on the set, and they took a picture. Because uh, I was in makeup with him and his kids, and that was special for me. I never saw the picture because, <laughs> <laughs> but it still was, you know. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Cool that it's out there somewhere. Yeah. Him, so. Wow, <laughs> yeah. uh, Darth, uh, what was your biggest memory or fondest memory or coolest mom? Uh, geez, seeing all the the the, the cast, the main cast, probably mostly Zachary uh, Quinto, just because I was a big Heroes fan at the time, but. I, and or be just being on that set, the the destroyed uh, um, the destroyed medical bay. Oh man, just seeing all the just torn up. Uh, just, it's just so damn cool. I could just live in that little that little set, hanging out with that. the AMR, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl <laughs> Urban, him, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, uh, Tracy. Now uh, talking specifically the movies because you probably got a million memories from all the episodes. Was there something that really stood out for you? Was it reaching and grabbing Data's hands or his legs, I guess? <laughs> what was it? That, that was cool, but I, I, I have to say when I was called to play me, but then to play Alice's stunt double, it was pretty darn darn cool for me. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, getting, I was... Getting blown up on the bridge was pretty cool, too, though, Pretty right? radical, yeah. <laughs> and then um, I kind of knew... 
something was going on when Patrick came up and said, you're going to be my cultural date. And every time we were in 10 forward in my little turquoise getup, they'd always sit me with him. He was getting mail. I, I just have so many wow memories. I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, when I, when I played, you remember my, uh, one of my aliens, the Antican, to me, it was like a wolf dog. Right. I met Sharon Stone in that outfit out in the, you know, alleyway when I went out to get air. And then from that, I got, you know, invited to her rap party for the movie Sliver. I mean, I just had so many weird, cool things happen. But um, yeah, I'd have to say the first movie was, was pretty rad for me. Um, and then that's when I got my first Star Trek tattoo with with my name on it. Oh, and that whoa. was the, that that yeah. was the communicator on my, you know, from that movie. So it meant something to me. That was like uh, that was one of my major stunts I I, I you know ever done. Awesome. So is that yeah. is that your name or Lieutenant J? Lieutenant J. Okay, awesome. Great. <laughs> cool. uh, okay, so we do have to run, guys. Uh, we're out of time here. Darth has given me the wink, like he's like, let me go. I got to go work on G.I. Oh, Joe now or whatever. <laughs> uh, but uh, thanks very much for joining us, guys. We're going to have all of their information in the description boxes below, as well as any projects they'd like to promote and or charities. Uh, very big special thanks to Darnell Davis, Tracy Coco, Rico E., Anderson, Jason, Matthew <laughs> Smith, and Darth Shuey. Thank you all very much. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.